an immediate ban on all Apple devices by government officials. Uh, Apple's the largest company in the world, and 96% of their products are manufactured in China. Let me say this again. 96% of their products are manufactured in China. If you go to read the story against the backdrop of the tensions between Beijing and Washington, the extension of a ban imposed for more than two years ago, signaling growing challenges in the U.S., which relies heavily on China for revenue growth and manufacturing. Staff in the three ministries and government bodies were told not to use iPhone at work, said the sources, who declined to be named due to their sensitivity of the situation. One of the sources said they had not yet been given a deadline to seize their iPhone. Apple and China State Council Information Office, which handles media queries on behalf of the government, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. It was not immediately clear how widely the ban was being enforced with a third source uh, uh, at one of the three ministries saying he still was using an iPhone and had not heard about the restriction. A fourth source at a Chinese regulatory body said they had not been explicitly banned but were told they would be held responsible should any issue emerge with their use of their iPhone. And a fifth source said at uh, another regulatory body said uh, senior staff had two years ago already been required to swap their iPhones for locally made brands such as Huawei Technologies. Uh, What else do we have under 2020 Chinese? Okay, go a little lower, Rob, to see if there's anything else there. Can you do me a favor? Bloomberg on Thursday reported that China planned to broaden the ban. Uh, Okay, Bloomberg on Thursday reported that China planned to broaden the ban to state firms and agencies citing sources. Let's see what Apple stock is doing based on this announcement. Did it do anything to Apple stock today? Go to Apple stock today. It's down 3.2%. Okay, Apple stock is down 3.2%, which... 3.2% 3.2% may not seem like a lot of money, but 3.2% is roughly uh, 3 trillion. You got uh, 10% would be 300 billion. 3% would be $30 billion loss today. <laughs> Pat, what, do you, what, do you, what, what is the reasoning behind why don't Apple they... Apple lost $30 billion today. They lost a the Snapchat. They wow. got to get a hold of what? Hillary. They lost a Snapchat <laughs> oh, today. Oh, wow, that's hilarious. Yeah, they lost the Snapchat. Well, Pat, what do you think What do you think's behind the not using a phone that's made in that country? Is it... For security, are they watching you? Are you on the internet? Are you well, what? There's a lot of different things going on here. One, Tim Cook slowly moved 25 percent of his structure to India, like to manufacturing he wanted to do in India, and then even Apple ended up having some friction with India. Mm-hmm. If you go back and Rob type in Tim Cook Apple India, there was some problems there. Um, you know, manufacturing that they're going back and forth. And so when you say you're moving gradually some of your business outside of China, China's sitting there saying, wait a minute. Decoupling. All these years we gave you all this business. Now you want to move out to a different place. What are you doing? And But the reality of it is Tim Cook has to do this, and he has to do it in such a subtle, patient way, knowing if there is a man, a CEO in the world that's walking on eggshells and has been walking on eggshells, for the last two years, it's Tim Cook. Imagine you're a $3 trillion company, all eyes on you, okay? You're trying to move 96% of your manufacturing is made in China. After COVID, China showed how much control they had of course. around the world, the control with the chips. And you're like, hey, guys, we have to slowly, don't tell anybody, we got to move this out. How are we going to do this 96% to a different oh place? God. I don't know, but we have to do it, and we have to do it slowly. So Break guess up what? with a cycle. Yeah. By the way, just something crazy to be thinking about. Do you know the new iPhone is coming out in the next couple of weeks? Yes. Yeah. Do you know how much it's going to be? I heard it's more than a MacBook is it Pro. A thousand? No, 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 no. Put put the new iPhone price. You know, you know right? Oh, you, you heard know. about this, right? I it's, heard. It's going to be the most expensive iPhone ever. Ever. It's like oh. 11. It's going to be the most expensive iPhone ever. If you can just find that, the most recent story, Rob, on how much they're selling it at, uh, there's stories of it. Don't go to stores. Go to stories. Go to news. Go to news all the way at the top. Yeah, it's not showing you anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. How much? So, what's the average price? I, I Listen, the stories I've heard is 35% more than it <laughs> usually is. That's what I've heard. And I may be wrong, but I've heard it's going to be pretty high. And uh, I don't know if this has anything to do with that. Scroll down a little, maybe. Go a little lower. A little lower, right there. iPhone 15 will be starting at 799. That's what I heard. I heard the 15 Pro was. Yo, Pat, you might like 15 Pro Max starts at 1300 dollars, and it can go as high as 2000 dollars. What? I'd rather get a computer. 
You'd yeah. rather get a MacBook but, than But you have to also realize if Apple is having to move this stuff out, they don't have a choice but to raise have to raise prices. So a lot of people wow. want this thing to be made in America. We can make it in America You're for three times the price. You okay four, with that? $4,000 yeah. phone in your. Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the way, there's another real quick one here on India. So not only do they want to move to India so that they can manufacture and they can balance the risk of Chinese manufacture and things like that, like a conservative president putting tariffs and things like that. So Tim Cook's trying to do that but what is tim cook's market share today in india that's a very good, a good question 5.1 percent mm. it is 95 percent android so if you want to keep growing you have to open new markets and you have to find new consumers and there's a big stack of them sitting in india so they want to make mm -hmm. the phones there and they also want to break open into the india market and have more success there's, with it. there's okay. a big there's only one big problem with india okay what india is not china let me explain what i mean by this India has is is one of the only big countries in the world that's banned TikTok. Yeah. India's banned 100 uh, uh, what do Chinese you call it apps. Chinese apps in India. India doesn't give a shit about America <laughs> or, or China. China. <laughs> They're not playing the card of being controlled and being bought. They don't, they've seen what happened to other places. They do not the, the the benefit India has is they're 10 years behind China, right? Whether it's with their roads, whether it's with their internet, whether it's with their broadband. Their broadband sucks, by the way, in India. And they don't their have it in a lot of different markets. Infrastructure everything. is a mess over there, right? Yep. Schooling, all of that. Hospitals, airports, ports, period. They have a lot of problems. But the benefit of being 10 years behind is gives you what? Growth. You, you know, you get to see it case studies vision. of all the exactly. mistakes mm. they made. And you get to see the relationship between China and U.S. to say, look. Those are 19 mistakes China made. Those are 17 mistakes U.S. made. Guys, we're not going to be doing this because we do not want to be in control like America, and we don't want to be lo losing trust around the world like China did. Let's move a little bit more strategically. That's yeah. the edge India, I believe, has. And then don't forget, India is the largest democracy in the world under Modi right? and everything they're doing. China is still CCP, communism, state-run capitalism, however, however you want to put it. Back to the Tim Cook Apple thing. I don't know. What kind of responsibility do you take for moving 97% of your manufacturing over to a communist country so you can get some cheap child labor? Respect. But I don't know. There's some level of accountability has to pay for it. And you talked about we got to quietly move things out to India. Uh, they're well aware. <laughs> they're watching know. everything. Yeah, the elephants okay? leaving the, the room. Spy balloon. So, yeah, exactly. You know, and I love this. I love this uh, insider article. It says China may now never take over the U.S. crown as the world's largest economy. So that's big news. Ever since we've been focusing on the China issue, ever since we started the podcast, 2020, I've been like, holy shit, China, they're coming for us. China, China, 2025, China, 2030, they're coming for us. Mm. But COVID has basically uh, allowed the world to be like. What's really going on in China yeah. right now? Good. And what have we seen? Tourism, tourism has plummeted. Investments in the country has plummeted. <laughs> Businesses are slowly, stealthily moving out of there. But the biggest thing that China has lost is trust. The world don't trust you, Xi Jinping. The world is fully aware of what you got going on now. And now, whether it's stealthily or openly, people are like, I'm getting the hell well, out of this but, place. But let, me, let me address the first question, sure. which is a very valid question you brought up on Tim Cook. It is on Tim Cook to have the answer to the question, why is 96% of your manufacturing for Apple being done in China? Yeah. Very fair question. Okay. His comeback, I don't know what his answer is going to be. I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but this is what I would be thinking. I would say when we first started doing business with China, China didn't have the kind of lack of trust in the world that they do today. What did you want me to do? Hmm. We've been doing business with China for many, many years. And all of a sudden, we're so into deep because we were able to make nice margins, deliver the product for people. We were able to get you know as many iPhones that people wanted to order. No other country could move this fast, not including America, not including this at the price that, that you want, and for us to get our margins. So he, when you're into deep in a relationship like that, you know, in today's economy, let's just say Tim is starting Apple today and Steve Jobs just came out with the iPhone today or the iPod today or the iTouch today, whatever the new product is. He's probably in today's climate not signing a manufacturing deal with China. But this is a relationship that's been going on for decades with China, no. way before they were a scary empire on what they did with COVID. Yeah. Well, I totally understand that's, that's that. that point. I understand that. If I may respond. Uh he knew he was well aware that it's still a communist country, even if they were, you know, 
had certain capitalist tendencies. He was well aware. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just oversimplifying this. If I have an investment portfolio, if I'm starting a company, or if I'm my own personal investment por portfolio, I have 60% domestic stocks. I have 25% international. I have 5% bonds. I'm putting 2% in yeah. crypto. I'm going to diversify. So just God forbid the U.S. economy goes down or the Chinese economy goes down. What what? There's going to be other asset classes yeah. that go up to go in i don't know if it's 96 or 97 percent whatever it is that is the vast majority not, of your it's manufacturing not how business works bro that's not well the, then teach me no it's not I'm, no yeah. you're asking the right question this is when the podcast gets exciting when we're having these types of uh, uh exchanges mm -hmm. right so i just googled when apple started doing business with china okay so check this out Probably Rob, 1990 if you can, no it's 2001 believe it or really? not i thought it was further back right yeah. so if you if you Google Rob, when did Apple start doing business with China? That's exactly the words. It'll come up. In 2001, Apple brokered a partnership with China. Apple brokered a deal with China. The government poured billions of dollars into a new infrastructure for Apple, building factories, paving new roads, uh, constructing housing for Apple workers. Kate Whitehead helped oversee Apple's operations in China. Now, mm -hmm. watch this. When did Steve Jobs die? Probably right around that. Nope, right. he died in 2011, 10 years later. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah, so meaning it's none of... It's only been 10 years or 12 years since... Yeah, so so the, okay. point, the point is, this is under Steve Jobs when wow. you're in China, and China and Steve... Everybody thought China was the way to go back in the days. China was like the future frontier. Yeah. You know, Richard Nixon broke the deal. Nixon. Everything is good. We're all doing business. Ray Dalio is hardcore pro-China. One of the interviews I did with Steve John, uh, uh, Ray Dalio, we talked about China. It was not the friendliest interview. No, it was very with, uncomfortable. It was very That's uncomfortable talking yeah. about China because he was defending China. And I'm like, wait a minute, America first over China. Mm -hmm. But the moral of the story is when you're mm -hmm. in too deep like that, and by the way, when did they ch uh, launch iPhone? What year did they launch oh, wow. iPhone? What year was iPhone launched? Oh, I'm actually curious. 2007? 2004. I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, seven? Okay. Seven. Seven? okay. So 2007 iPhone is launched. Wow. You sign a deal with China in 01. 2011 Jobs dies. You know, Tim Cook comes in in 2011, 2012. You know, you're kind of coming in and seeing the numbers, and then all of a sudden, now you're today. Tim Cook has a very hard job today. So Tim what you're Cook saying is it's not on Cook. It was on Jobs, and now Cook, is it's his deal, is his responsibility to unwind I don't think it's on anybody. On. I mean, we have an insurance company that we're doing all these policies, right? So, so yesterday, we're having a conversation with one of our carriers right now that we've given so much business to that now it's kind of like, you know, you, you have to make the adjustments where somebody doesn't mm -hmm. have that much market share 96 is very scary, very, very scary, I, I, very uncomfortable. How, it, it, it's very yeah. uncomfortable well, to have 96% coming if Imagine if 96% of, of PHP's business went to That's I'm saying it, national life, one this carrier. Is, this is a great conversation yeah. to have is what I'm saying to you. It's a very good conversation to have right now. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.